Hello. So it's uh, the 80th anniversary of Batman. And I've talked about the Dark Knight trilogy a lot on this channel before. Um, I don't know if I'll make a video on that exactly. Um, but I kind of wanted to talk about some of the other films and whatnot I haven't really talked about. I'm mostly going to be talking about uh, some significant films, like the 1966 film with Adam West and Burt Ward, and uh, the Burt and Schumacher series. Um, I've never really touched on any of those. I, w I will mention there was a 1943 serial uh, and a 1949 serial. I have both of those on DVD. Um, I haven't really watched those in a long time though. I watched them once. I remember enjoying them, but you know, I enjoy some other stuff regarding Batman, so I haven't really gotten you know, I haven't really watched those as much, but I think for the time and based off of the inspired by the comics that there were I think they were fairly, they were as good as you could get for Batman um, in those days. So I, um, I'm not really, uh, I you know, don't really have anything really to say other than that. Um, but I just wanted to talk about some of the other Batman stuff. So I'll start with the 1966 uh, film. Now, obviously, it's based off of a film, movie, or TV show. It's a bit dirty. Yeah, I can explain that later. You know, this is based off of the TV show. Um, though, uh, obviously, Lee Merriweather is Catwoman in this. Uh, where, as in the show, it was Julie Newmar. And then, you know, in the last season, you got Eartha Kitt. But anyway, uh, you know, Julie Newmar was doing another film and couldn't commit to this one um, because as soon as she knew, uh, as as she found out about the movie of this of the show, after she completed all of her episodes of the first season or so, she went to do other stuff, but. Unfortunately, by the time the movie came about, well, they couldn't, you know, she couldn't do this. But Lee Mer Merriweather was, is very good. Um, and this is a fun film. Um, it's the first thing I ever owned regarding Adam West's and Batman and Burt Ward's Robin. And then again, I think this is mostly really everyone's first thing they ever owned. I have this on VHS and DVD. And this is the Blu-ray. Um, I might talk about the series later on, uh, someday. But you know, if you've seen this show, it's basically this is a feature-length version of an episode. It's, it's you know, these villains come together and they go to, you know, as it says on the box. Four of the most powerful villains of all time, Catwoman, the Penguin, the Joker, and the Riddler, are armed with a dehydrator uh, to turn humans into dust, and the fierce and foursome intend to defeat the dynamic duo once and for all, and a bid to take over the world. So that's the gist of the film. You know, they want to take over the world, and it, you know that dehydrator. It's very, it's very comical, just like the show. Um, so if you like the show and you haven't seen the movie, I believe you're going to enjoy the movie. Uh, it's, it's a very fun watch, just as the show is a fun watch. Adam West is awesome as Batman. He's my second favorite Batman of all time. I know that's not a very popular thing to say, you know, because, you know, you have Christian Bale, you have Michael Keaton, you have Ben, you have these serious renditions. comes to live action. But I've just but this was the first Batman I ever saw on TV. I saw Adam West and 
a little after that, I you know the show. A little after that, I saw the films, the other films, not this movie. I saw this later on, like I was, uh, I believe I was like six or so. But here, but yeah, I I enjoy this film. Now here are some of the films I have never talked about really at all. I might have mentioned them once or twice, but not really in depth. And of course. The Tim Burton Batman film. Now, of these, you know, many people have their favorites of the, this series. And, um, you know, Batman, got Batman Returns, uh, Batman Forever, and Batman and Robin. Everyone's favorite Batman movie. Yeah. No. Yeah. So, this was my first introduction to Batman seriously, as a, in terms of a serious character. Um, I was also young, and I did read some comics of that were around the 90s. Um, and I enjoyed them. Though, of course, you know, maybe I... Would, at the early age of which I obtained such comics, a long time also I was getting into these films and that show. You know, I might not have been able to necessarily, I can't remember how old I was really when I saw all this. But I did later on get some comics and I got a good sense of what was going on because of the visuals. So even if I couldn't read very well at that young of an age, um, but I I did understand what was going on just based off off the drawings, and that's a, a good thing about comics. Um, um, you're able to see and you know what's going on, so you're not your imagination isn't exactly perhaps different from how the author or writer intended it to be. But, you know, seeing this film, uh, it's a very fine film. It's a very good film. Um, I enjoy it. Uh, I think I enjoyed it a lot more as a kid than I do now, particularly with the Nolan films. You know, you know how much I enjoy the Dark Knight trilogy. I'm not going to focus on that here a whole lot. But, you know, uh, looking back, I still do enjoy it, and I... I do rewatch this here and there, you know, because it's it's a fun film. It's fun to watch. Um, you know, it has the Joker played by Jack Nicholson. Uh, Michael Keaton is Batman. Michael Goff is Alfred. Pat Hingle is, um, you know, uh, yeah, he's Commissioner Gordon. Billy D. Williams is Harvey Dent. You know, he's Two Face. Kim Basinger is Vicky Vale. Um, if there's any real major complaint I have, it's her. Uh, she screams so much in this film. I I don't like her in this movie at all. Um, you know, there might be some Kim Basinger fans that watch this, and they might enjoy this performance of hers. And that's hey, that's fine. That's all right if you do. I just don't. Yeah, she screams too much. I just, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, uh, she screams too much for my taste. I'll just say that. So, yeah. And Batman Returns. I must call it a other film. Yeah, Batman Returns. Uh, Michael Keaton returns, as well as Tim Burton to the director's chair. You know, and Tim Burton, you know, he. He has a very dark visual style in general, so his take on Batman in this film was very good, I thought. I thought it fit with how he wanted things, so I will get to some stuff about Burton a little on, later. And he returns to the director's chair, you know, as I said, for this film. Um, and this film really seems to be more Tim Burton-like um, in, in, in the sense of what you would what you would come to mind when you think of Tim Burton 
It's a lot darker than Batman. The tone's darker, and there's a bit more of a somber tone, I think, inter put into this also. Um, I will say, though, um, Danny DeVito's penguin is disgusting. This is he's eating raw fish, biting people's noses. I don't know. Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman. It's very good. She's really, she really does. I, I have to say, you know, while people come, you do, they, you know, they go rundowns on the characters and stuff. I don't really exactly have a particular favorite Catwoman. However, I've always said, for me, Man Hathaway would be the sort of de facto Catwoman for me in terms of favorite because I love the Nolan trilogy the best in terms of Batman. And I do enjoy her take. But I also enjoy Michelle Pfeiffer's take. I, so I don't really have a favorite Catwoman, really. Many of them are very different. Though Halle Berry's... Uh, I'm not a fan, a fan of that film. Not a fan of that version. And she herself even admitted when running the Razzie it was a... It was a bad movie, to say the very least. Um... Yeah, I don't. I, the less said about that film, I think, the better. I don't want to get into that here, because that doesn't even have Batman. So, but yeah, but Michelle Pfeiffer, she does, she does a good job though with Catwoman. She's not really crazy, at least not the, to the. If she is ever crazy in the comics, it's not like how she is in here. And I think another reason I like Anne Hathaway's Catwoman a bit more is because she's a bit more. Like how Catwoman is supposed to be, you know, Selena Kyle, you know, um, and you know she can. There's different interpretations of the character, obviously, um, but in terms of the fact of that she seems to be crazy. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't think she's supposed to be like a crazy Catwoman who will just murder people. She does it. She's not like the murdering type. She, like, if she has to kill someone, you know, I think, you know, she'll do it. Like if uh, it's the last resort, that as that'll be that you know she'll do it. But otherwise, you know she she's not going to uh, unless she absolutely have, has to. Where in this, you know, she doesn't seem to have a problem of killing or really. You know, just doing anything, she'll kill somebody or hurt somebody in a, you know, uh, in a way that's, that will hurt them for quite some time, like break someone's arm or whatever, like, unless she has to, or she usually gets her way, tries to get her way somehow. Um, there's a lot of things with, with the character that are not really in this interpretation. Though with the plot of the film, understandably, I'm not going to have everything in there, but they, they really made her more crazy and insane a little, little bit, so, but, but, you know, whatever. Um, a fine film, not my favorite of the, these four, um, but, you know, it's a fine movie. And then here we have Batman Forever. And we have Joel Schumacher directing. Um, and, you know, people aren't fond of these films by Schumacher. This film, I actually think, are, is okay. It's not all that memorable, except, you know, there's Jim Carrey and Tommy Lee Jones. And Jim Carrey is Jim Carrey is the Riddler. And again, that's how they wrote the Riddler, so. Plus, also... Looking back, you know, there's Frank Gorshin. How, uh, how, you know, when you have that as a frame of reference to the character, you know, on screen portrayal, I can't really say anything too bad about Carrie's performance, really. Um, 
Val Kilmer replaces Michael Keaton as Batman Bruce Wayne because once Burton left, Michael Keaton was pretty much like, I don't want to do this. However, like there was a moment where he thought, yeah, no, like it, the script just isn't good. Like he would stay on if it was good, but he didn't think the script was good, so he left. And, uh, yeah, he went on to do other things. There's Schumacher. Oh, excuse me. He came in and made it a lot lighter than uh, the previous two films because, well, Batman Returns was seen as too dark for kids, even though they never... They weren't really marketed as kids' movies, like in the trailers and stuff, but there was a tie-in with McDonald's and toys and stuff, so that gave the impression this is a for a kids' their kids films. Even though you know all of these Tim Burton's Batman to the new one, Batman, but even now they're all like you know they're PG thirteen, not for kids. Kids can see them, but they're not for kids. You know, you're gonna show kids Batman. Here, here's one. Show them the Adam West version. You know, there is a version. I just can just point to that kids could watch for Batman. So there you go. If you're a bit worried. About darkness being a thing. There you go. So Batman Forever also introduces Robin, who was thought about from uh, being in the franchise since, like, at the end of this film, or even being introduced at the end of this. Nothing came from that, but we get him in this film and. It's Played by Chris O'Donnell, and, well, eh, I don't know, this interpretation of Robin isn't very good. Then again, this material isn't all that great either, so it's like, I don't know, it's like, you try to make the best with what you can, but if they're not giving you much, it's kind of hard to work with anything. And Val Kilmer isn't a bad Batman Bruce Wayne, but he's not memorable, because... As people praise Christian Bale and Michael Keaton for their dark outings, he he he's just kind of forgettable as Batman. And nothing against him; it's just this movie is just meh. It's it's like okay, kinda, eh. It's not phenomenal, incredible like the Dark Knight trilogy, or really good in a sort of a landmark film like this, or really dark. Maybe at times for some creepy, like uh, Batman Returns. It's just Batman Forever. It's not that exciting. And then, of course, we have Batman and Robin. Now... Will say this was my favorite Batman film. Uh, this film came out when I was three. Got it on VHS. Enjoyed that for for a year or two. So I loved it as a kid. But after those few years, I realized I didn't really watch this film as much. And I wondered why. I re I went back to the. Adam West Batman and uh, Tim Burton Batman and if I did watch a Schumacher film and it wasn't Batman or Robin it was Batman Forever and I try to figure out why it was I really loved this as a kid and it dawned on me when I saw Batman Begins and that is this is not a good film Batman Begins was phenomenal, it was fantastic, it was great. 
Okay, my favorite Batman movie until The Dark Knight, which that replaced it. And then The Dark Knight Rises replaced The Dark Knight as my favorite Batman movie, which I've made a video about already, so yeah. But anyway, I enjoyed this film. I really did. I thought it was incredible. It was... Wow. But... I think because I was a kid, and because I had a lot of action figures of Batman and Robin and Poison Ivy and Mr. Freeze and all that, Batgirl, who was also in here, played by Alicia Silverstone, and also George Clooney replaces... Um, Val Kilmer kind of walked through the part, if I'm going to be honest. That's why I think. I think he really did walk through the part. He did, like, he, on the documentary, which, the documentaries on these, this Blu-ray set, the documentaries are all good. Like he said, there was a thought. Now, I'm not quoting it exactly, but the just the just gist of it is there was a thought with George Clooney where well I'm the third Batman in the fourth Batman movie like, and there's a thought what can I bring to the character that hasn't already been brought and I remember the first time I watched the documentary and he said like, well that's not a very good way of approaching it, you know, that's a, one of the first thoughts you had, that's not good, though I guess, you know, at this point, I can't, I, I don't know, I guess I get it, what is it you can bring to this character that hasn't been, you know, Michael Keaton was the dark one, Val Kilmer, he was dark, yet the tone of the film didn't know what it wanted to be, and this was really light. It was a very light film compared to the previous three. It, it, I think Arnold Schwarzenegger is one of the best parts of this film. Take that for what you will. You know, I, if you don't like Arnold Schwarzenegger in this, you know, that might be seen as a like a real head scratcher to you, or if you do think he is, you know, even with the ice pun and everything, like as stupid and dumb as those are, uh, I don't know. I there's some stupid enjoyment I guess I got out of I get out of them, just because I don't know. It's something, and I do like how they do portray. Mr. Freeze in this film at times, like with, with his wife and all. That is very comic book like, like how he is in the comics. He really loves his wife. He's frozen her in order to cure this disease she has. Because she has a disease that they don't know what to do, they don't know what to how to exactly approach fixing her, but he takes it on himself to try and find a cure. And that is, I think, one of the best stuff in the film, honestly. Um, and I saw a video some time ago where why you could see why this film was greenlit. Because both Batman, or Bruce Wayne, and Mr. Freeze have a similar dilemma. Both have loved ones who are sick from a disease, which they share the same disease. And there's a, they're trying to find a cure for them. And, you know, in the end... Alfred's fine, because that's who was sick. Or Batman. He was fine. And, you know, yeah, it was early on, but what this, that uh, Bruce Wayne Batman, 
was given from Mr. Freeze and how with his help and how Batman made a deal with him how, you know, you will be able to continue your research in Arkham. He'll, he's going to make sure he'll see to it that, you know, despite everything that happened, then he gets why he did. He was doing all this. It was just for his wife. You know, he doesn't mean to hurt anybody. He doesn't want to hurt anyone, but he loves his wife so much. He's going to freeze people. He's going to steal. He's going to do what he can to get more money, to get more uh, equipment for his research and all this. And he, yeah, he just, uh, it's a very sympathetic character. Numa Thurman as Poison Ivy. Um, I do think she's also another highlight of the film. Uh, you know, maybe her performance by some isn't very good or isn't as phenomenal as one would hope as a character, but she did, but she did the character with as good as anyone else could have with the script. Alicia Silverstone as a Barbara, that girl. Yeah, I don't know. Chris O'Donnell is kind of there, too. They did make Barbara the niece of Alfred for some reason. She's been in boarding school in England. It doesn't have an accent. Um, I don't know why they didn't just have her be James Gordon's daughter. Because she's Barbara Gordon in the comics and all that. So you know, That doesn't make sense to me. It's so weird on that aspect, but, you know, whatever. I'm not a fan of Batman or Robin, but I have seen some people who have found some enjoyment with the film, and if you do, great. Uh, I'm just not that fond of it, but I, watching the documentaries, I kind of I don't know if appreciation is the right word, but I see what they were going for and how, in a way, they initially did want it to be a bit darker, but because of the success of Batman Forever, it went in a lighter tone, and Joe Joel Schumacher even says he was the director. He could have said no to this and that. He could have made certain decisions which could have made it darker, more serious of how he wanted it to be. Because when you hear him talk at times about the character of Batman and what he would like to have done, you get the sense he really likes Batman. He really wanted to do justice to the character. But because the studio was really, Burr. do this, do that, da, da, da. You know, make it lighter than the other films. Like, it's a shame he had a compromise what he wanted, yet you kind of understand at the same time. I don't know. It's like, you're the director. You could have said, no, I'm doing this, or I, I'll, I'm gone. He could have said that, but he didn't. You know, he said he signed on. He did this. You know, and, and he doesn't really make any excuses. So, there you go. Well, with Tim Burton, I will say, um, <clears throat> I don't know with Tim Burton, he doesn't, you know, there's things like he's made some comments. Like, one, he's like, uh, the Killing Joke was like his first comic book he ever read because he's like has dy dyslexia or something, so with panels and comics, he doesn't know where to read. <coughs> he doesn't know which one comes first and which is after, he gets confused. But with uh, the killing joke, he said it flowed like a book. He was able to read it with like really no problem. But then later he would go and comment, make some comments out like he has never made read a comic book. Anybody that knows him knows he's never read a comic book. Um, you know, 
So I don't know. One thing though, uh, he didn't seem to want to. He didn't seem to really get Batman as a character because he was more focused on the villains like the Joker and Catwoman and the Penguin. And while they're all great characters, I mean, they're, it's called Batman. Batman Returns. His solution was to have Batman be like in the more of the background and the dark. You know, like he's there, but it's not focus on him too much. It should still be a this mystery. Well, he should be a mystery to the you know to the characters in the in Gotham City in the film. Not to the viewers. Um, anyway, Bruce Wayne, I don't know. Personally, I was more interested in Batman, not Bruce Wayne. Um, and I feel you should uh, be invested in both when Bruce Wayne is out of the bat suit and in the bat suit. You should really care. With his films, I really was interested more in what he was doing. Um, as Batman, particularly the first one. Then again, with him as Bruce Wayne, well, there's a lot of moments he shares with Kim Basinger, and since I'm not fond of her in Batman, that could also play a hand in that. Though with his interactions with Selena Kyle <clears throat> in Batman Returns, I was a bit more invested in, um, uh, in Bruce Wayne. Plus, also, you know, Michelle Fiverr did a, a, a great job as uh, Selena Kyle Catwoman, so I think that also helps, too. Um, yeah, that's really it for my comments there. Um, I know there's the animated series, and there's various animated films. I have some films here Killing Joke and Gotham by Gaslight. Um. um which I might talk about someday, but I am not the biggest fan of the animated series. Some of the not that huge of a fan of the animated films. Now that's not to say I I don't I dislike the animated films because um, I do enjoy them from what I the ones I've seen I like. The animated series, I don't know what it was. Um, it could come down to the fact that I prefer live action over animation. That's not to say I dislike animation, because I don't. I enjoy animation. Uh, my favorite show I've mentioned is Space Goes Coast to Coast. It's an animated show. Though, yes, there are live action stuff. You know the celebrity guests, but the animated parts are the best. Like the interaction Space Ghost has with Zorak and Boltar, and you know, Brack on occasion, those are are great. Uh, best parts of the show for me. So it's not that I don't like animation. It's just I, don't know. I love seeing a performer as Batman. I love seeing a like the, the Batmobile. It's built. A version is no, is actually built. I love seeing the costumes. I love. I just love seeing all the hard work, put into. From concept art to actual. Being an actual suit or being an actual vehicle. Now, obviously, animation is very hard. It is not easy whatsoever. So I don't want to make it sound like oh. Uh, Animation's easy. You can just draw, and there you go. No. I don't want to make it sound like that at all. But it, I think it's very clear, clear I enjoy live action more when it comes to superhero, comic book iterations. Or, uh, yeah, I, I enjoy live action more when it comes to that stuff. When it comes to doing a adaptation or a uh, incarnation of a comic book character superhero whatever I'm gonna be more drawn to the live-action stuff where 
somebody saying, you know, the, the animated stuff is a bit more faithful to the comics. For me, as long as the story and the films and stuff are good, that's what I care about. I want them to be good. Um, and I don't know, ex I can't really say exactly why I wasn't very fond of the animated series so much. Just I just wasn't. Uh, I mean, I watched it as a kid. You know, it was a, I was of the generation who was supposed to love this. If I enjoy Batman, this is my Batman. But as you all have heard before, Christian Bale is my Batman. Um, and before that, Adam West was my Batman. You know, before you know, Bale put the cowl on and the cape, it was, it was Adam West. He was my Batman. Um, and there are people who love Kevin Conroy, and he does a very good job. He does a fine job, fantastic job, voicing Batman Bruce Wayne. You know, he does a really great job in the vocal uh, department. But I don't know. I just don't. I just have preferred the live action more. And it might again be that I want to also see the performance, not just hear it. You know, hearing is great, and seeing the animation, but that's not really what, you know, Kevin Conroy would do. That's what the animators and the directors, you know, want uh, the character to be doing. In his mind, he's doing something else, and what Batman's doing is different. You know, um, like how he might make a facial expression or something. How Batman might hit someone it could be different from how he thinks. Um... Though I've al I always loved Mark Hamill as the Joker. And I also enjoyed Harley Quinn. To me, those were the two best characters. And I think the reason I would watch the animated series, since while they weren't always a recur they weren't the main villains through all the episodes, they were shown very prominently. They were very popular. And seeing some footage of Mark Hamill voicing the Joker... I think really helps me enjoy his a bit more, his Joker a bit more than I enjoy Conroy's Batman. And, um, it's because, you know, he, like, acts as he's voicing. He's doing, he's making faces as he talks, he's doing hand gestures and this and that. It just seems like he's getting into the character. He's really being the Joker. Um, and that's not required, obviously. Nobody needs to do that, but I just that to me really helps me enjoy his interpretation of the Joker a bit more than Conroy's Kevin Conroy's interpretation of, uh, of, uh, of Batman. I hope I pronounced his name right. Uh, probably didn't, unfortunately. Yes, I did. Uh, okay, good. I don't have to have a whole bunch of people commenting out, you mispronounced Kevin Conroy's name. I did. Uh, I don't know why I, my mind just t had a blank for a moment. Like, uh, I messed his name up. And also, Harley Quinn, for the most part, has been, you know, animated. Of course, now she's played by Margot Robbie in the live-action stuff, and I think Robbie is doing done a very good job as a character. Um, some would have loved to see her portrayed like uh, look wise more like in the comics and stuff, but we may see that. We may not. I don't know. But I don't know. Um, yeah, Harley Quinn's a great character, um, and the Joker is a great character. And those were the two best uh, uh, characters in the animated series, in my opinion. You can agree or disagree. It's fine. But that's just my thoughts, because I don't think I'll really talk about the animated series a whole lot. Um, so, with me maybe talking about Batman more on this 
series. I just wanted to give a heads up at the very end of this video, so you don't uh, uh, wonder about that if I'm ever going to, especially if I talk about some of the animated films I have and that I've seen. Um, you know, yeah, I, yeah. Overall, I enjoy the films, the other films outside of the Dark Knight trilogy of Batman. I enjoy the Adam West film. I enjoy the Tim Burton films. Batman Forever, I think, is okay. And I'm not a fan of Batman and Robin. Well, I will say, uh, this, this, this video got a little longer than I thought. And again, it's also a bit shorter than I thought, too. Except talking about many movies and stuff and topics regarding Batman and film and whatnot. I didn't know how long this was going to be. At least it's not an hour, so. Okay. Uh, I, uh, I don't really have anything else to say. So. I hope you all have a good day. Hope you all have a good weekend, and ha we'll have a good week. Um, you can say what your favorite Batman film is of the ones I've talked about here in this video, or not, in another from maybe another video I've made, like the Dark Knight films. Um, but yeah, that's all I have to say for now. So until next time, see you later.